The Real Estate Revolution Radio Show is designed to educate Missoula homeowners and home buyers how to navigate the uncharted waters of the current Western Montana real estate market in an educational, often edgy, and high energy fashion with host Jason Baker. Jason will teach you all the secrets on how to win with real estate, from listing your property to purchasing investments. Jason has you covered. Be sure to check the home of the week, the good news, and current market updates each week. Jason is revolutionizing the real estate experience for over 100 clients a year. Welcome to Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker of Rise Realty. Jason, how has your week been for you? Oh, buddy. Happy Sunday. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's been good. I'm wore out, though. I'm glad it's the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been a crazy week. Um, our, our property uh, of the week here on O'Keefe, again, it, it went under contract. It was uh, just oh, amazing. Nice. Yeah. Didn't take long. Been an amazing week for my agents. They're out showing property and listing property uh, daily, so I'm, I'm so proud of them. And Looking forward to bringing the show today. A little tutelage on, you know, we've been talking a lot about sellers, especially the last two shows, right, Casey? Yeah. And, of course, it's not just sellers out there. It's buyers as well. So we want to we wanna educate the buyers on how to win. I mean, the number one thing right now is, Jason, um, you know, I just looked this morning. There's only nine homes in Missoula County under 500K. Oh, wow. Hello. Yeah. So, you know, so naturally on those, they're going to put, and we just put one live on Snapdragon, and we already have like 25 showings. We put one live on Macy yesterday. Uh, I think there's 25 to 30 showing scheduled on that. I mean, stacked 30 minute intervals for the next two or three days. When you when you list one, does it immediately just like you just phones ringing off the hook? We, 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 we should talk about this too. That brings up a great point. Yeah, it, it is. It's like like <laughs> I almost need to hire someone else to just answer the phones. And we have people that that do that, of course, on our team. Um, but it's nonstop. I mean, where there's a barrage of phone calls from out of state, in state people moving up, moving down, these kinds of things. But the, the, everybody asked me, they say, well, Jason, like the number one question I received today on the 20 people I've spoken with already, mm-hmm. okay, is how do I, like, like, are you, like, how do I get my offer in? And so we're going to talk about how to win your offer. But the first thing people should know is most real estate agents right now, due to the amount of calls that they get, the amount of out-of-state buyers that there is, are doing something what they called uh, an offer phase. And so an offer phase is when, and it, you know, it, it's, it's when, you know, so for instance, if I put one live on Tuesday. There's people from all over that want to come see this house. They'll give it some time to get yeah. offers. They're not going to take the first one they get. Got to let it ruminate. Yeah. You, know, you got to let it marinate. Got to marinate. Yeah. Marinate. Get, a, get a little ferment. So, but yeah, but it, it, so you put it live on Tuesday. Our goal is to put everything live on Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay. Have an open house on a Sunday, and then let and then you know hold the offers open until Sunday night or Monday night, and let people know Monday or Tuesday which offer the seller decided to go through yeah. to go with. And again, we'll discuss how you know to structure that offer so that you can win if you're on the buying side of that. But the offer phase is so important. It's important to know that there actually is an offer phase because a lot of people are like, I love that house. I want to make an offer. And I want to know tonight if I won. Yeah, it's, it's like it's like a Facebook Marketplace. If you ever tried to buy something on Facebook That's Marketplace, right. if you're not the first person in yeah. the comments. You... <laughs> no holds. And, yeah. and they start beating on each other in the comments. You know, ever seen that? It's so funny. I'm like, oh, my gosh. It's a it's a, it's a $3 T-shirt from 1970. Yeah. It's okay if you didn't. Can you imagine doing that with real estate? Yeah, having to type in next? Yeah, I next? I mean, next. Yeah, I know. Next, yeah. I mean, should, we should put a, you know, like a boxing ring in the front yard of some of these things. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. I mean, can you imagine like at least paper rock scissors? Yeah, paper rock scissors. Yeah, with batakas, you know, and everything like that. No, but it's it's uh, it's crazy. And the, and the reason why sellers are doing that, and again, for buyers, it's important to know the reason why the sellers are doing that is because they have to allow people to get there. They have to allow people uh, an opportunity to put their bid in, and they want time to decide what works mm-hmm. best for them. Because mm-hmm. most of the sellers still have to find an offer. There has to be enough buyers through the home through good marketing, etc. Enough buyers through the home to find the buyer that'll let them stay for a little while. Yeah, you know, because not all buyers, you know, every it's analysis. Society, I think you could agree with me. Yeah. Give me keys. Yeah, give me <laughs> keys, right, baby. Come on. So, but and that's how it is. And so, yeah, that offer phase allows people to get there, the seller to have enough time to review it because it is a seller's market very much so. Mm-hmm. And then um, you don't have enough time to choose the right offer. And sometimes the highest offer is not the best offer. Yeah. You know, and what we're seeing a lot right now, we'll go over this here in the next little bit, is we're seeing a lot of offers that are, you know, waiving the appraisal, waiving the inspection, and just, you know, buying it as is. And, of course, giving them six months to move out. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff sellers can get away with now that they used to not be able to get away with. Yeah. Yeah. So it's crazy. So, well, you want to hop right in just get into the 21 yeah. ways to win? We should, I think. Yeah. Yes. I think, no, the, so if, if, and I do this, um, this, this, this PowerPoint that I'm looking at right now is as boring as PowerPoints. Oh my gosh, I thought after I got out of college, well, I'd never ever I think you did little, a great job, Jason. Can you believe that? Yeah. And there's no way that I actually did that. Someone on my team did that. Someone <laughs> that knows how to use those um, and do that. It has an artistic mind. So, but it, it's it, the number one thing. And, you know, a lot of calls I got this morning, it's so good that I got this many calls just to remind me yep. of the process and the struggle that buyers are going through. But half the people I spoke to this morning, and number one is make sure that you're ready to make an offer. In other words, be pre, you if you're have, not paying cash, you have your pre-approval be letter. Be pre-approved. Yeah. 
And if you are paying cash, you better have a bank statement. You can cross out your number there, mm -hmm. but that has your name and that has that you have this much that you know you can afford the actual house that you're going to look at. Yeah. So that's number one is to get pre-approved. And so it's not extremely difficult to get pre-approved either. It's a great question. So every single bank that's worth their salt right now, in my opinion, will have a web link that you can go to and click on it mm -hmm. and call. But the beautiful thing about that is, like, you know, well, I don't want to do it over the internet. I don't trust the internet. Well, neither do I, for you sure. Still have money in your in your uh, bed. I, 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 I do. I, I can't. <laughs> say where it's at you know what i mean because my you know my address it's is stuffed in your mattress but it might be it might be somewhere like i i you know yeah somewhere on the property on the 90 oh, okay. acres yeah <laughs> somewhere that could be my deer blind <laughs> there you go. Now, be, you, now you're just giving away locations yeah you are yeah absolutely yeah they're gonna come down and uh, do, some one. do some treasure hunting yeah do some treasure hunting down there yeah <laughs> so that so the you know that's the most important thing is to get the prequal go online go ahead and fill that out right and, and get that done and have that letter in your email so you can give it to your agent that you're working with so that yeah. when when you go to structure the offer you know it's just ready so just kind it goes without saying, but so many people are afraid to go start the process. Yeah. We're going to have a lender in here eventually to talk about this. Just getting the ball rolling. Just get the ball rolling. Yeah. It's well, and it is the season, too, because uh, it's tax season, so you're going to have all of your financial yep. stuff already collected and ready to go. So you can have that, yeah. that pre-approval letter ready. It's just sitting there, those dang tax. Why did you have to? I was in a good mood. <laughs> you don't oh bring God. that up. Oh, I know. It's, it's like, a four-letter word. It's, but <laughs> It's a reverse payday. <laughs> That's what that is. But anyway, up. so then when you're submitting an offer, it's really good that your real estate agent has a good rapport or at least very good communication. So there's a, in a transaction, there's a buyer's agent and then there's a listing agent. And sometimes a listing agent also acts, they call it dual agency, as both. I mean, it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. And you want to let the listing agent know if you're a real estate agent and you your, your real estate agent as the buyer should also tell the listing agent that, hey, this is my highest and best offer. Yeah. Okay. Because otherwise they think you're, you're trying to dicker or you're trying to do something else. So that there should be a, there should be a very clear line of communication that says, yes, this actually is. So if you say this is my highest your and max. best, do not be bluffing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no poker face. <laughs> I'm terrible at that. <laughs> yeah, I'm Start sweating at the brow. <laughs> I'm, ter I'm terrible at it, too. I'm terrible at most faces. So, um, you know, and a lot of people right now are really like, you know, the third thing that I recommend is, and my sellers like it, there's been time, and some states are actually outlawing this for some reason. I think they're trying to remove the emotion from the, uh, from the transaction, which I agree with in some ways. But the fact is, is that they're saying, write the seller a kick butt letter, yeah. you know, write them a letter. And, and, you know, that says, hey, here's, you know, I got, I got 23 dogs, 94 cats, and my kids really <laughs> love the, the, you know, they really love jumping on your bed while we're at the showing. <laughs> Not supposed to do that, but. Uh, it, it's so, starting to sound like my fiance's yeah. dreams here. <laughs> no, so, just like, so write them a good letter. And, and a lot of times, like if it comes down to it. The seller is going to choose yours versus the one that, you know, it's kind of seems a little bit more impersonal. Mm -hmm. And again, some states are outlawing that because they definitely want to remove the, uh, you know, they want to remove the emotion from that. Because, you know, we've had a seller choose a lower offer because they like the story. Because they, you know, because they like the, yeah, the person. We're, we're like, no, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily it went through. So, which was great. So, because ultimately at the end of the day, it's up to the seller to decide the, the offer that they feel yeah. is best for them. And we're yeah. just there to consult them and say, because for us, it's all about, you know, it, there's, it's an onion and we're trying to remove as many layers as possible. We're trying to make it so that if we accept an offer, it has, Every, it, it'll close, you know, 100% of the time or 99.9% .9 of the time on the first time. Nobody likes a sale fail. Nobody wants their deal to fall through. No buyer, no seller wants that. I, so, I have a huge fear of rejection. Yeah, yeah, I got, yeah. But we, we, been, we it's been, been that not, way since the ladies. Yeah, yeah, that's, exactly, yeah that's exactly right. Yeah. For me, yeah, I You go her, to prom with me. Yeah, I know. I was so afraid. To, I was so afraid to ask him. Like, I'm like, how did you, how was your promise? And I never went. Well, why not? Well, I didn't ask anybody. I said, I was waiting for someone to ask me. Yeah, but I went to an all guy school, so I'm glad, oh. so I'm glad no one did. <laughs> <laughs> we told you the show would be edgy. So, yeah, <laughs> for sure. An interesting prom. Yeah. Well, All right. Well, we got more of the 21 tactics. I like the wording here. 21 tactics to get your buyer's offer accepted. Uh, more on that coming up right after this quick commercial break. You're listening to Real Estate Revolution Radio with Rise Realty and Jason Baker. Hey, your friend Sean Hannity here with some personal advice for home sellers. Now, there are various companies or agents that will offer to give you cash up front for your home, but be careful. Now, often there are dramatically lower prices or hidden fees that the average person can miss, and that can cost you a lot of money. That's why I prefer to work with a great, smart real estate agent that truly knows the local market and can give me the best advice and put the most money in my pocket. I'm talking about Jason Baker of Rise Realty, Montana. Now, Jason can give you an instant cash offer or, with his accelerated demand program, well, he turns up the marketing and gets you the most money for your home. But more importantly, he can help you look at all the options with hundreds of potential buyers, and that creates demand for your home and helps your home sell at a price and deadline that you agree to, or he buys it. Don't leave money on the table. Talk to the only agent in town I recommend. Call Jason at 552-4443, online, jasonbakerteam.com. That's jasonbakerteam.com. 
From listing your property to purchasing investments, Jason Baker has got you covered. Time for more of the Real Estate Revolution Show. All right, welcome back to Real Estate Revolution Radio Show with Jason Baker of Rise Realty. And Jason, today we're talking the 21 tactics to get your buyer's offers accepted. And it's all about the buyers today. So I was continuing that list. It's all about the buyers. They've been neglected the last two weeks, you know. Yeah. It's just time. We just got to get it handled. So, um, it, you know, the other, on a side note, I'm starving. Did you bring lunch? It sounds like we're harboring a whale in We're here. harboring, we're, we're definitely, it could be two, two of them. That's exactly right right now. Yeah, I'm doing this intermittent fasting thing. You know, I don't know if it's because my wife told me I'm a little too chubby or something like that. But she's, yeah, she's, so it's, anyway. It's tw- almost Speedo weather, yeah, honey. Yeah, that's right. 21, 21 ways to look better during Speedo weather. Yes, that's uh, 21 tactics to look better this summer. So before the break, we were talking about 21 ways to get your offer approved. You know, it's such a competitive market out there. Multiple counter offers everywhere. You know, first thing we looked at was get pre-approved. Then we said, let the list, you know, communicate well with the listing agent. Make sure to write the seller a letter if you so desire, just to kind of separate your offer. And, and realistically, and the fourth thing that we were talking about, is don't ask too much from the seller, Casey. And the re- reason why we say that is there's going to be multiple offers probably 90% of the time on these houses. You're going to be competing against another offer when you go to buy. So if you're doing that and you're asking for all of this stuff, off the wall stuff, even so, the, the seller is going to choose the offer where it doesn't look like you're trying to take advantage of the seller, if you will. Yeah. Now, uh, lots of buyers, unfortunately, right now feel taken advantage of by the seller. It's not really the seller's intent to do that. It's just that they're getting so many offers. They can, they're can they spoiled right now. There will come a day where they're where no longer spoiled. Yeah. Back the other way, yeah. Yeah. What they say, what goes up must come down. Kind of like my weight right now. Exactly. You know, the intermittent oh. fasting. Oh yeah, we're wait, coming down much more slowly than it goes on. It's gonna no. be. It's gonna yeah. be a while. It's gonna be some law. It's gonna be yeah. a rough spring. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be a rough spring. That's right. So I always tell everybody, I'm still wearing a t-shirt in the hot tub. So anyways, it's still, it's still sweatshirt weather. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All summer long. Um, when you go to make an offer, Casey, one of the one of the big things is let's say that the offer that the house is 500 and there's two offers there that are uh, coming at 550. Let's just say, and, mm-hmm. you know. And and uh, so there's this part on the buy sell that says you know earnest money or you know that you're going to put down. So sometimes upping that like the average is a thousand bucks that people put on there. Um, I would venture. Like the minimum's like five hundred or something. Yeah, the minimum. Yeah, five hundred. I mean, it, it's so hard for a seller to keep that. Uh, anyways, there's so many ways a buyer, unfortunately, with the way that Montana contracts are written, that a buyer can get out of that contract. You know, up until the last minute, oftentimes. So sometimes it's an irrelevant number. There are ways to protect the seller when we look at all of those. But you know, upping that could if it's all everything else is apples to apples, you know, help your offer look better to them. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, more money. Yeah. Well, more money. means you're more serious too. Yeah, yeah exactly. More money, more serious. Well, when you <laughs> see someone put a $10,000 earnest money down, someone's over here with $500 and, and that, that might be all they have. $500 and that might be 500 million. You know, for me, I mean? that's a lot of money. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? I was going to say two dollars, but for, not for you, but for me. Yeah. So, but one thing we're really starting to see in another way to really set your offer up to win is to waive the inspection. Hmm. And, but that's scary. Yeah. Because what if you're buying a house, you know, you're, you're, you know, down in Steve I and, you know, it's built in, you know, 1591 or whenever the, you know, the kids. I didn't there. know Steve I's been around that long. It hasn't, but, you know, I just. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah, I know. It's, I'm telling you what. Yeah, it could, it could have been. So it could have been just. It I know be, it's one of the oldest communities in the state. It, it but, really is. Yeah. That's, but 1591. There are a few houses in town that do look like 1591. <laughs> so, uh, but it's, it's one of those things where if prudent. It might be a good idea if you find out, and it's really a good idea talking about that communication from before, that your agent would ask the listing agent, how many offers do you have so far? Because then you know how competitive you have to be, and an agent with experience will basically know where to put that. Doesn't mean you you wouldn't still lose, but... When I hear that there's 10 offers, my offer structure is going to be much different than if there's one or none. Yeah. It makes yeah. sense. So I know that we're going to have to really crank that up. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, you know, we've had offers where people offer $100,000 more and they lose. I mean, think about that. They still lose. And they lose. Yeah. Because because if, if they're financing, it's 100000 over and there's a cash with a waived inspection, the, mm-hmm. the seller is likely going to go with the cash unless your letter is awesome. And you're like a real good, well, yeah, exactly right. You have, you have a picture of all the puppies. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, but wave inspection, um, it, it's it's hard, especially for, you know, first time home buyers to do that because, of course, they're so worried about everything through the process. And I, I completely I remember the first time I bought a house. Holy cow. Down in Stevensville. But wave that. And, um, you know, but in a lot of times what they do at that point in time, rather than wave it is with them when they walk through, they have, you know, an engineer friend or they have a contractor friend. And really, you should let you let the uh, listing agent know if you're going to do that. But sometimes they bring someone there just to see if there's anything obvious, you know, that has a keen yeah. eye for that kind it's of kinda thing. It's kind of like when you go to buy a used car, you'll yeah. sometimes run it by your buddy's house and have them check for oil leaks. Uh, that's yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. And go mudding in it. Yeah. You know, they love that. You a know, little test drive. Yeah. A little test drive. You know, yeah. And this time of year, there's plenty of mud. Just drive down my driveway. <laughs> Brian will tell you how long that is. And. 
And uh, he's never come and helped me shovel it. So, but anyways, um, <laughs> poor Brian. Um, the next thing that we're seeing an awful lot on the incoming uh, uh, offers on our listings is lots of buyers are uh, are being coached by their agent to waive the appraisal case, right? So, and, and that's really hard. Or 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 change the way that that's written on the buy sell. And what I mean by that is there's a clause on the Montana buy sell that says, you know, house must appraise for at least purchase price or house must appraise for this. You can uncheck that box. And so therefore that would not be part of that. So even so, if you offer 600 and the house is lift, listed at 500, as crazy as that sounds, that's happening daily. OK, then um, at that point in time, that that seller no longer has to worry about whether his house appraises for 600. He knows you're going to come in with the difference if even if it appraises at 550, if they're doing financing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's crazy. It's like, why would why would you want to do that? Well, right now within in Missoula, only 34 single family resident homes for sale. You know, it's uh, it's one of those things that they just have to do. Um, the other thing, too, if, if you're going to be uh, waiving that appraisal, you need to make sure that you can prove that you have the assets to cover the overage or the difference, okay? It's important that, to have that be included in your, your letter or whatever. It should. And if you're paying cash, obviously, typically, they're not ordering an appraisal anyways, and that's one benefit for a seller. When they're taking a cash deal, there's not going to be appraisal they have to deal with, or they're not going to have to deal with the financing contingency as well. Whenever you say pay cash, I always just picture people showing up in black suburbans with briefcases. Oh, it happens it happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I got a cash offer. It's yeah, all in the back Yeah, that's suburban. exactly right. That's exactly right. So. It, it's just, it's one of those things. Yeah, they really get the sunglasses, everything. Yeah. Um, one of the hardest things, too, especially for the people who are watching all these house shows, you know, where they're still finagling because it's repeats from like four or five years ago. Uh, I've, been, I've been watching. <laughs> I've been watching too much, actually. <laughs> well, you start uh, love watching. It, love it or list it. Yeah, love it or list it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's funny because everybody still thinks that they can negotiate. Yeah. And <clears throat> there are times when you can't. So when could you? Huge days on market. Yeah. Okay. But typically, if a like, seller like is, over sixty days, would you think right or? now? Uh, right now, long days on market is like four minutes. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. <laughs> no. Yeah. It, it start. You know, after, if it's not under contract in thirty days, in every sense of the word, right now, it, it's it's indicative of either terrible marketing or being overpriced. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it'll virtually sell. It'll, it'll virtually go if the marketing is good and the photography is good, the videography is good, and everything else. Realistically, you shouldn't have to go out past a five, six, or seven day offer phase if you're a seller. If it's if it's beyond that, in my humble opinion, it's either not being marketed correctly, they're not picking up the phone, um, a part time, you know, agent syndrome, or you know, too busy, or um, uh, or it's just overpriced. More often than not, the price is too high because even in this market, even bad photos sometimes people will still go see the house. Okay. Or the other thing that drives me crazy is, I don't know if anyone's ever seen it, is when there's capital letters across the whole entire real estate yeah, description like in there. Like the words, you're it's yelling. Like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's it's like cap, <laughs> caps locks uh, are on. <laughs> yeah, like, just like the person's yelling the whole time. Yeah, they're yelling at you. Super it's good. A, it's a three bedroom, <laughs> two and a half bath. <laughs> it's a super good marketing plan. Let me tell you, to scream at the potential buyer. You yeah. Know? yeah, I mean, they might as well just put like the, like the middle finger emoji there and <laughs> if you can't even do that. So anyways, all right. So, do, so, so this, this next one is like, don't. Don't think about offering below asking. You really have to figure out in your mind mentally right now. And this could change at the drop of a hat, especially with these interest rates rising and, you know, some uncertainty in the world, you know, World War Three and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But don't even think about coming in below. Think about, be start start thinking how much above that you should do, you, sh you should offer. And your agent can help you with that or a qualified agent can. That. Um, and I tell this to agents. Uh, the next one, uh, I can't repeat, you know, because they'd have to beep it. But you make sure that your agent is not being a, hmm. To the listing agent. Okay. Do you want to fill that in? Yeah, don't be. Don't. <laughs> got it. <laughs> to the listing agent. You know, um, someone told me long ago, you know, it's easier to bring uh, bees to honey than vinegar. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that, is that, did I say it right? I think so. Okay. I and believe, if I didn't I believe say that's right, the right, you know, yeah, you know what I meant. Maybe we'll beep that one out too. We, we should, because it was, it was a horrible <laughs> example, you know, for sure. But don't be that agent that's just like, like that busybody agent that doesn't read the MLS, doesn't read any of the rules, you know, is, is it's just drives us crazy. You know, be professional, be nice. We'll answer your questions, but you know, have it together before you call, you know, free agents. So just don't be a there. jerk. It's, I mean, it kind of goes without saying, yeah. but it happens all the time. You know, this morning it's like, you know, you get these agents that call and it acts, they, they, they're, they're moving so fast. It sounds like their hair is on fire. And, uh, and I'm like, yes. And I'm like, well, all of that information is actually right there in the MLS. Just due diligence. Well, it's just called a mouse click. Yeah. And you can see it. The information is readily available. Ta -da. We say, no, it's, it's amazing what happens when you look. Yeah. Um, another way that you can increase your likelihood of 
getting the home or the purchase is to use a bridge loan. And we touched on that last week, but I know there's some new listeners this week, is get a bridge loan. In other words, have, turn it from something you were thinking about financing into a cash offer by taking money out of the equity of your current home, buying that next one, and then selling your other house. Okay, Because two things happen there. It's cash, and now you don't have a house to sell. Yeah. So it's like it's like two positive things that could help you push your offer forward. It'd be easy. Yeah. It, it, it's almost the equivalent of a, having a cash offer too, right? Yeah. I mean, like if I think about it in a logical manner, which I'm not sure how often I do that, but anyways, uh, like if I think about it logically, if I'm a seller mm-hmm. and I have a, 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 the highest offer is a cash offer, they haven't asked me for a, uh, an appraisal contingency, an inspection contingency, and they want to let me stay for three or four months after the closing so I can move all my hunting stuff out of my shop yeah. or whatever, right? My boats and all stuff that drives my wife crazy. Um, if they like, like that's to me, that's the best offer. The, truly. The flip side is, and I, I had someone yell at me, listen to this. Their client hadn't seen, so, and I mean yell. In all and caps. when I mean yell, yeah, in all caps, <laughs> with the fist flying, with the email, with the text messages, with the angry emojis, you know, all that stuff. I can't believe we didn't win. And I go, you're, you're off. We submitted an amazing offer. And I go, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you did. Right, so I pulled the offer up, okay, because I, I, I was waiting to see an amazing offer because I hadn't seen up until that, to that point, except the one that won. Just a bunch of zeros, huh? They hadn't seen it. Yeah. It was, uh, uh, it was uh, uh, an off-brand kind of financing. So they hadn't seen the house, so it was sight unseen. Okay. It was off-brand, and it was 50000 below asking. But this here is an amazing, amazing offer. Amazing offer. That's like fake news if I've ever heard of fake news, right? right? You know what I mean? I mean, think about that. Yeah. Like, that's an amazing... I'd hate to see a bad one. Yeah, right. You know? How dare you? <laughs> I was sitting there, and I'm like, whoa, that's a that's a, that's a a good way to frame that, you know? So get a bridge loan, right, um, rather than do that. Let's keep going. Um, disclose the particulars. If your buyer is currently selling their home, we need to see that on there. We want to know the address. We want to know uh, if it's under contract yet and everything else. The hardest thing for us to accept is sight unseen, number one. Okay, everyone thinks, oh, they won't see it. No, believe me, they're going to come see it. And then they're going to tell you in two weeks that they don't like it. Yeah. Okay, they can wiggle out because they always put it subject to them seeing it at some point before closing. What if they come the day before closing, they don't like it? Yeah. You know, so, but realistically, the next thing that we have on our list that we really, you know, advise our clients not to accept is a house that's, they have a house to sell, but it's not even on the market yet or under contract to buyer. Now, why would I advise my seller to do that? Put your house on the market, get it under contract, like we talked about. Like, they should go back and listen to last week's episode, right? How to sell and buy at the same time, right? Yeah. So do that, subject to the seller finding suitable housing, work something out with the, your incoming buyer, and then when you go to put an offer in this house, it looks like your affairs are all in order. Your house is sold; it's closing in two or three weeks if they can get this house, and off they go. Mm-hmm. So it's just a much better way to do that. Yeah. So we got some more tactics to go over before the end of the show, but we're going to be back right after this quick commercial break. You're listening to Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker of Rise Realty. Hey, if you are in the market to make the most money for your home, Sean Hannity here with some important advice. Now, look, I'm an active investor. I have bought and sold a lot of properties in hot, cold, moderate markets. And one of the lessons I have learned is this. Hire the agent that knows how to create the most demand for your home. Now, if I needed to create demand in this market, no question, there's only one real estate agent I trust if I needed to sell my home. I'm talking about Jason Baker of Rise Realty, Montana. Now, Jason can give you an instant cash offer or with his accelerated demand program, Well, he turns up the marketing and gets you the most money for your home. While the average agent sells a home or two every month and only spends a couple of hundred bucks on marketing a year, Jason spends thousands of dollars every month to attract thousands of buyers. Now, that helps you generate multiple offers and sell your home for the most money possible. Now, anyone can give you a home evaluation. Call the agent that creates the most demand. Call Jason at 552-4443. Online, jasonbakerteam.com. That's jasonbakerteam.com. From listing your property to purchasing investments, Jason Baker has got you covered. Time for more of the Real Estate Revolution Show. All right, and we're back with Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker of Rise Realty going over some tactics for buyers in the market. The tactics for buyers. So another thing we're starting to see in a lot, and we have been for a couple of years now, uh, is where where the seller or where the where the buyer will put in or have their the buyer will have their agent put something called an escalation clause into the uh, into the offer where it says we'll offer 550 but we'll go up we'll go 5000 over so we'll go up to 605 if you can prove to us that someone else offered 600 so like, i'll go 5000 like over the next highest offer it's called an escalation clause it's yeah. like ebay yeah it's like, yeah it's exactly it's like ebay but way more expensive right <laughs> yeah so that's that's another tactic um, not playing games like just again being super forthright with your agent and with the the listing agent um, and then the, the, 
the other thing, and I kind of touched on it, but it's so important that your agent would ask us as the listing agent, how many, again, how many offers? You got to know that so you can structure it correctly. It's it's one of the most important things to know, just because you're, you're going to have to turn that dial up at some point and your an experienced agent will know just, just how to do that. You can still lose, but there's you know, a greater likelihood with the experienced agent to get that done. And then you uh, you should ask yourself if a short-term inconvenience, like when you go to sell your house, you know, having two mortgage payments, so a short-term inconvenience is worth a long-term financial gain. Because people who buy right now before the rates go up are not only going to have a lower payment, but they're going to have some appreciation throughout this year. Not as much as last year, they estimate, but some. Mm. So they could gain that in wealth. They could also pay down their mortgage faster with a lower interest rate. And this is a win-win situation for a buyer. Yeah. So I'm not exactly sure how waiting, unless you just want to pay four or $500 more a month in interest. I mean, just throw it out. If they want to throw it out the window, you yeah. and I would, would take it, wouldn't we? Sure. <laughs> I mean, heck, I mean, all day long. And, I, and I like paying $400 extra dollars a month for something. That's great. Ab- absolutely. And the number one, yeah. yeah the sarcasm yeah. on a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it was a sarcasm. I was concentrating on this uh, PowerPoint. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. so I'll give you a curse you laugh, though. But um, but definitely, uh, Casey, considering offering the buyer before they, uh, the seller, before they even ask for it, a rent back. What's a rent back? A rent back is when you, the buyer, a uh, rent back is when the seller can stay in the home after closing. Oh, okay. You know, we hit that last week extensively. If that if that seller knows they don't have to move out immediately, they can get their money, yeah. then work on moving out over one, two, three, four, five months. They would love that. So if you reverse offer that back to the seller and you're a buyer, they're going to be like, dude, that's amazing. And yeah. some of them do want to just move out. Some of them are ready or sometimes the house is vacant. It's irrelevant. Don't do a rent back if the house is vacant. That's also another tip. Yeah. I see that probably being a good idea. <laughs> it, wouldn't, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a real, uh, real, really important for the seller at that point. So offer to pay the seller side closing costs. You could say, hey, I'll pay all your closing costs, Mr. Seller, and I'll, you know, if my offer's higher. So those are some of the some of the great things that we could do or that we could, you know, we could uh, advise our our buyers to to do and also their agents to do in order to, you know, win one of our listings, you know? Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's, it's a tough market for both buyers and it, sellers sometimes when you think about it. it. It really is. And I think, like I say, I mean, the reason why we're here is to educate. That's right. for sure. Which also simultaneously means we're boring the heck out of people for 30 minutes every Sunday. But <laughs> if they, they can listen to this, play it for their spouse, or whatever else, before they go out, it just reduces anxiety, both for sellers mm-hmm. and for buyers in the community. And I think if we reduce that anxiety, we can actually increase the amount of listings that we have out there, which will help everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's my goal. Shape up here soon. Uh, Speaking of which, do you have some new properties? We do. I have been inside. I can't retire yet. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. We we had. (laughs) I was hoping for a break. We had. Yeah, I know. We have uh, uh, two new listings that just came to market. One on eight hundred eight five Mesa, which is uh, up by McClay Bridge there in the uh, O'Brien Creek there area right there. Beautiful one acre home. Uh, It's a two level. Um, it, it wonderful, some, some kitchen updates and bathroom updates. It's four bedrooms, two and a half baths on an acre with a detached uh, shop garage. I believe it's uh, 16 by 20 or 14 by 20 you concrete had me floor. You had me at shop. Yeah, you? I had your shop. I mean, this yeah. you'd look good in there. Thank you. You absolutely <laughs> would. Yeah, I, I mean, 100%. I mean, what are you doing in a little while? Go look yeah, at right, it. Let's go look at it. That's right. Open house is uh, here in another hour. So that's one. That's a price at six ninety nine nine. We've had about 25 showings on that uh, scheduled already. It just went live, I believe, uh, yesterday. Uh, first showings uh, today. The other one is uh, 8944 Snap dragon that's up at the y okay, okay. Yeah, right there where they're building a bunch of those new houses this yeah. is a manufactured home but it's on a permanent foundation was only moved once it. it's a four bedroom two bath home nice open layout it's priced at 299 now based on the fact that we have 30 something now because my phone's going off showings on that i would i can't say what i think it'll sell for but i know that both of those houses based on the amount of showings are going to sell for so far over asking price it's crazy but we're going to be uh, later today doing an open house on Mesa. So people should go and, and, and go over there and see Meredith and my team will be doing that. And then the one on Snapdragon, we don't have time to do an open house because we couldn't get it into the, the paper because we just put it live yeah. uh, this morning. So or, well, Don't or, mind or, me. I'll just be wandering days. around the shop at that place. Yeah, no, it's totally fine. Yeah, absolutely. There's probably cookies inside. So, I mean, that's where I'll be. Who's the guy in the shop? And that's listed at two ninety nine. that one on Snapdragon. Yeah. Okay, so great. Houses of the week. Uh, if you want to learn more about both your future properties, you yep. just visit. yeah, they're both there. Yeah, just go to jasonbakerteam.com and scroll down just a little bit, and right there, uh, you'll see all those houses, and you'll be able to look at the Matterports and walk through both of them. Cool. Yeah. Got any ideas of what's coming up next week? Yeah. So next week we're going to be talking to uh, a mortgage lender. Oh, good. He's going to talk to us for you know fifteen or twenty minutes about the cost of waiting. Like actually break out the yeah. spreadsheet. How much money do you lose per month? He's going to do all those calculations that make my head smoke. Oh, okay? I, I can't wait for that though. That's one thing <laughs> is the dollars and cents and and yep. just and me doing math in my head in yep. general. <laughs> it was just a gerbil in there spinning around on a wheel. That's yeah, it's, that makes that's why we get along. Right. Yeah. So it's unbelievable. <laughs> Hopefully one of those gerbils will have a thought. Yeah, you know, which is great. Yeah. 
and then after that, we're going to be working on some mindset stuff next week because there's two kinds of real estate. It's real estate that we buy, and then we also have real estate in our heads. So there's some positive thoughts to bring us uh, through the weekend next week. All right, perfect. Yeah. We'll be back again next Sunday right here on News Talk KGBO. It's Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker, Rise Realty. We'll see you next week, Jason. Thanks, man.